Hi, so I've picked up a whole bunch of these Tekken SP20 plugs. They're like 10 bucks a piece off of Amazon. And they got an 80 ESP8266 inside them, uh, which we can hack and put ESP Home on and run on Home Assistant. And I've done this to, oh, maybe about a dozen of these so far. I keep buying them in packs of four and I just knock them out. Now, if you use Tuya Convert, T-U-Y-A Convert, um, you should be able to do this without opening this thing up. I've never gotten it to work, and it's sort of a cat and mouse game that uh, Tuya Convert could hack a plug, and then they get smarter with the plug, and then they update Tuya Convert. And it doesn't matter to me. I like to solder, and I like to break things open. So this is the way. This is the surefire way. It doesn't matter where Tuya Convert or these plugs are at. Uh, this works every time, but it's a little bit of work. And basically, I'll show you what we're going to do, but we're going to open this up and uh, there's four pins in there that we want to solder onto and then we can program it and then it's ours. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to use a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel to cut into this guy. Uh, the chip where the um, uh, where we want to solder onto is right about here. So we'll go real big and we'll actually go from top to bottom just off of the plug and over to here. And that's what we're going to cut out. Now in terms of depth, you only have about an eighth of an inch before you actually would hit the circuit board. If you hit the circuit board, you probably will hit a lead. I've done it. And then you throw it in the garbage and uh, try again. So what's nice about working with the wheel is you can adjust, you can hold your pressure for up and down so that you don't go through and destroy the chip. Let's go. not totally through all the way around, but that's alright. It's just plastic. It bends and it breaks. And it's also a little hot and melty, so if you're quick with the screwdriver, it comes right out. Save this. Don't throw this out. Hit it with a piece of sandpaper to get the goop off. And then later on, we're going to put it right back in there, and we're going to hit it with hot glue, and that's how we're going to seal it back up nice and neat. But take a look. We can see all the wires that we're going to solder to. Okay, now we're up to the part where we're actually going to solder on wires and program this guy. So here's the chip, and you can see inside here is an RX pin right there. It's labeled and a TX pin, and then these are the, the uh, contacts off of the ESP. I drew it out here. Uh, there's five wires we're concerned with. Now, this is the um, pins off of the ESP. On the bottom left is the 3.3 volt pin. That's our power. Okay. Uh, to the right is our GPIO0. We don't actually use this with the programmer. What we do is, is when we um, power up the chip, this has to be grounded. And that's what puts the chip into bootloader mode, which is how we flash firmware. So we're going to need access to that. And then the TX and RX pins. Now, um, if you know anything about programming with an FTDDI, FTDI programmer, um, the TX pin of the programmer goes to the RX pin of the chip and vice versa. Um, these are labeled backwards. These are not the TX and RX pins. It's backwards. So you're actually going to have the TX of the programmer connect to the TX of the chip. Don't get thrown off on that. Um, and then finally we need ground. And there's actually a ground wire. It's all the way out here. You'll see on some of the other posts online. But even more convenient, the neutral is connected to ground on the chip. So there's our five wires. Now we're going to solder these four on, and then we're just going to connect GPIO0 to the ground. We also need the ground on the programmer. Now because I like to do this a lot, uh, I made a harness. So if you come down here and look, RX, TX, 3.3, and ground is what the programmer looks like. So I have a little harness that has five wires, you know, with this one doing nothing, of course, and then here's uh, the ones I care about. And on this side, I have my, um, I have to look them up, but RX, TX, 3.3 volts, and then ground, um, which what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to attach this to the GPIO0, right, and then attach this to the ground. Makes it really easy. Okay, now we're not looking for much of a soldering job on this, so don't go crazy. Um, trying to do a great job. 
we just need it to hold until we get this thing programmed. And we want to be, you know, we're going to have to probably hold on to it to make sure the wires don't bend at all or we will uh, we'll snap them off. All right, so the white goes on the RX pin and I'm really just going to do like a spot solder right to the tip. there. Notice I don't even put any solder in there. I just put it on the, the iron. Yeah, that's terrible. I'll tilt that up. Let's get the 3-3 three, three in. And finally, we'll just get that uh, ground wire on GPIO zero. Good. Now, if this doesn't work when we go inside, it means we soldered over the top and uh, connected more wires than we should have. And if that's the case, we just come back, take it off, and do it again. So everybody's good. And now we're just going to carefully connect that to the ground. And you can program it while pin zero is grounded, which is nice. So we don't have to like take that off or anything. We're good to go. And we're just going to connect that to this when we go to program it. Let's move inside. Okay, so now we're going to flash our new firmware using ESP Home Flasher onto the chip. And you can create your firmware however you'd like. But since we're intending to use Home Assistant, uh, we're going to use ESP Home to and, and the add-in in Home Assistant to actually make our firmware uh, through configuration. Now, for these chips, and I'll post this in a blog post, um, for these specific chips, they have a couple of uh, sensors on there, a relay, a couple of LEDs, as well as energy monitoring. And I've set this um, Home Assistant configuration up so that we can still use the button on the plug to turn it on and off as a local automation, as well as the light on the chip, the light on the um, plug will indicate if it's on or off. Of course, you can do anything you want with those things, but that's the natural use. And then of course, we'll expose the energy monitoring and the relay to Home Assistant. And the only thing I have to change in here is at the very top is the name of the plug, so we can use these substitutions, and then also my Wi-Fi username and password. So let's get started. Okay, we'll head to HASS.io and choose ESP Home and open the web UI. And this is where we're going to create a new device. So we'll call this Energy 9. And it doesn't matter what settings we put in here because we're going to drop in our own configuration file, but we have to put in something for now just to get past this. And I have this problem with ESP Home. I find that I have to leave and actually relaunch the web UI, and then I'll see my new device and I'll be able to edit it. All right, so here's the YAML file with the configuration that I walked through, but of course I don't want any of this. I just pull it in from my notepad file. And this has my Wi-Fi settings, the Energy 9 name and everything. So let's save this. Now we can't upload this over the web, because we, we don't have, um... all right, so then let's go ahead and compile. And this is going to produce our binary file for us to upload. Once we've done this once, we'll never need to upload through the programmer. Again, we'll be able to upload using OTA and actually do it over the air. So we just have to knock this out four times for the four plugs I have here. It takes a couple of minutes and then, then we can do whatever we want with these in the future. Okay, looks like it's all done. So now that Home Assistant created our binary for us, we're gonna download that and we'll pull that up into ESP Flasher. And browse for that firmware. Okay, 
And now we're going to go ahead and connect our um, our device to the computer. So what I've got going on here is I've connected the programmer, and the other side, we're going to plug in the USB port. And once that's in, and of course you've got to have the right drivers and stuff set up, I believe, for this to all work. We'll come back into ESP Home Flasher and just hit refresh, and you'll see a COM port. In my case, it's COM4. We'll go ahead and say Flash ESP. It should right away come in and say Chip Info and start listing that it's flashing. And then it's a little bit odd. As it shows progress, it seems to delete lines and go back up backwards. That's normal. That means it's working. Um, if you don't see this, then you've probably soldered over the wires a little bit too much and you should go and disconnect them and do it again. Um, and uh, try again. All right, so now we're at 100%. And I'll go ahead and eject. Okay, so now we're done with that. And we can go ahead and disconnect uh, the programmer. And we'll take this back outside and we'll uh, remove those solders. And then we'll go give it a test. Okay, so we didn't go too crazy uh, soldering this on, so that'd be really easy to disconnect it. So a little pressure in the wire, a little heat on it, and they come right out. It looks like I got a big goop of solder on the RX pin. I'll clean that up. And a little on the GPIO. Okay, our plug is now done and ready, so we're going to test it by plugging it in, and we'll watch Home Assistant at the same time, and we'll see what we see. All right, so in Home Assistant, you'll see right here it shows red offline because this has never been connected before. So we're going to go ahead and take this, and we'll plug it in for the first time. We'll see just about how long does it take before it shows up. There we go. Took uh, all of about 10 seconds, and now this is online, and we can go ahead and do some stuff with it. Now, in ESP Home, or rather in Home Assistant, we'll look for a notification. As soon as it connects, it'll say, hey, we found a new device. What do you want to do with this? And we'll configure that. So now Energy 9 will be available in my states, and I'll be able to... Um, I'll be able to add it to automations or switches. Okay, so now that that's done, we can go ahead and give that a quick test. If we click on Energy 9 down here, we can see all of the different settings on it. Uh, the information we have, we have amperage coming in, whether or not the blue or red LED is on. We have a relay, uh, total daily energy, that's really nice. Um, and voltage and wattage, and then we also have a button. So if we click on the relay, then we'll be looking for the light to turn on. There we go. If you hear the click, that's the relay. That's how you know you got it. And then the light is uh, turning on because we have a local automation that says if the relay is on, turn the light on. I don't need to do anything more with this. I know it's working. We can also test the button and you can watch. Home Assist in the background is also updating. So there you go. It only takes about 10 minutes to do these. I do them four at a time. Uh, cut them open, solder the wires on, program them, and then uh, desolder them. Give them a quick test in case I made a mistake. And then I'll take that plastic. I won't do this in a video, but I take that plastic that I had, and I'll put it back in there, and I'll hot glue it, and that'll keep it mostly watertight. Um, I have about a dozen of these. I keep buying them four at a time, and I intend to have 100 of them by the time I'm done. So hope this helped.